Welcome to MuseScore in Minutes, a series of short videos that will quickly get you up and running with MuseScore 2.0. I'm Dr. George Hess. In each of these videos, we'll look at how to use some of the basic functions of the exciting new version of this program. MuseScore is a free and open source music notation program that's a great alternative to Finale and Sibelius. You can download it for free at the website shown on the screen. Lesson 2, Working with MuseScore. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the interface and get a general idea of how things work in MuseScore. For the most part, MuseScore uses a single window interface. At the top of the screen are the redesigned menus. The toolbar at the top of the main window contains commonly used tools. The top row starts with some basic file menu functions, and then the undo and redo buttons. Notice that tooltips appear when you hover over an icon. The zoom menu contains common settings. You can also use the shortcuts Command plus or minus or Control plus or minus on Windows uh, to change the setting. Oh, and by the way, zooming does not affect print size. The view control lets us choose between the standard page view and the new continuous view. This is really useful for large scores. Next, we have the playback controls, a metronome, score transposition mode, and the new image capture tool. You'll find some of these can also be accessed from the menus or by using shortcuts. The second row of the toolbar contains all of the note entry tools. We'll be looking at note entry in the next lesson. You can customize the toolbar by right-clicking and then selecting the items that you would like displayed. All other elements are entered from the palettes on the left. As we did in the first lesson, click on a palette name, choose the item, and just drag it to the score. Some of these items have shortcuts, and you can customize the shortcuts in the preferences. A new feature is custom workspaces. There are two built-in workspaces, basic and advanced, you can also create your own workspace using either your favorite built-in palettes or ones that you create yourself. The inspector is also new in this version. Click on any item in the score and you'll see its properties. You can hide items here, change the appearance, or precisely adjust the location. Double-click the title bar of the inspector or the palettes and you can create floating windows for them. Double-click the title bar again to redock them. The view menu contains other interface elements. The navigator makes it easy to move around your score, particularly for large scores. And the piano keyboard can make it easier to enter notes when you don't have a MIDI keyboard available. Preferences are found in the Muse Score menu on Macintosh or under the Edit menu on Windows. While Muse Score will run right out of the box, it's a good idea to know what's here. We'll take a look at this in a little bit more depth a little later on. So now you should have a pretty good idea of where everything is in MuseScore and should be ready to get down to work. In our next lesson, we'll look at note entry methods. This has been MuseScore in Minutes, a production of George Hess Music. For future videos, please subscribe to this channel. And for information about music technology training and clinics, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.